has the character on this thing? What leads to that character? Perhaps it's the beautiful colour, or maybe because it's so old. Or maybe because they just don't make these things like they used to. For me, it's a tribute to a simpler time, a simpler way of doing things, appreciating the craft. This is my antique billy made by Willow a really long time ago and I'm going to restore it to new and use it in my campfire cooking kitchen. I'm making a series on that campfire cooking kitchen and this video is going to be part of it. I'm using a concoction, a 50-50 mix of molasses and apple cider vinegar. Molasses has got chelating agents in it, which means it binds with the iron oxide to make something that's water soluble. And meanwhile, the acids in the vinegar attack the iron oxide. So how does one accurately measure out 50-50 molasses apple cider? I can't tell you, but I'm just going to pour this in about that much. Try and match it with the vinegar. Gave that a good shake. Might try to thicken that up by adding a bit more molasses. It's been a warm day, so molasses thins out, I think, like honey does. All right, folks. So like any great plan, it didn't survive the heat of battle. What I'm trying to say is I forgot to press record on the camera for the final bit yesterday. This is how it turned out. I've got the mix sloshing around in the bottom there and the same in the lid here. The viscosity was just too low. What I wanted to do was push cling wrap down and kind of stick it all around the sides so that it was evenly covering the whole inside. But I just couldn't get it to do it because it's, the molasses was so, the mix was so thin. So I'm gonna try it again, leave it for another 24 hours, but this time molasses has been in the fridge. I'm gonna do it and leave it inside in the kitchen so that the, the it's more temperature controlled and not so hot. And I'll also use a bit less cider vinegar um, so that it's not as runny. That's the plan. So that I don't damage that beautiful dark grey patina, I've got non-scratch scourers and silicone scrubbing sponges. Just going to use hot water and lightly rub it and hopefully that will lift off a lot of the red rust if it hasn't already come off. Gosh, it looks so good already. Just came out here for the better lighting. Have a look. I reckon that's heaps better already. You can see where around the tops it hasn't, and the sides it hasn't done it, but gee whiz, I'm impressed with that bottom after just one iteration. You can see it on this thing as well. So good. So let's have another go at it. There's a few good recipes you can do with molasses. It's a really nice baked beans recipe. It's so thick and full of sugar, it can create this really dark, delicious flavor. My sister used to live in Bundaberg, and when I was up there, we did the rum distillery tour, the Bundaberg rum distillery, and Molasses is just milled sugar cane, which is basically the starting product to make rum. And they've got like an Olympic sized swimming pool full of molasses and they make you try it. And uh, the, just remember the smell of a huge swimming pool full of molasses. It stuck in my nostrils for a long time, I'll tell you that. I got this recipe for restoration from Andrew, who along with his wife, Cora Ann, they own Strange Restorations in Sydney. They specialize in taking on restoration projects that no one else will touch. And they also have collections of wares that they lease out to uh, film and TV and theatre. As an example, they provided collections for The Great Gatsby, the film, and also the Australian TV show Further Back in Time for dinner, to name a few. I've put a link to their website below. It's a, they're a really interesting mob. And Andrew, your charisma is infectious. 
Thank you very much for your expert help and guidance. Literally painting on molasses. This is a tin of diced tomatoes and it's just shy of the diameter. This is about 100 mil and the billy is 120 mil. So with a bit of weight, I'm gonna wrap, put glad wrap on it, put that, push that down and then hopefully the capillary reactions push the liquid further up the wall. So we'll see how we go. It's so bloody sticky, it all just sticks to the edge. Got some more molasses, so I'm gonna make up another batch and I'll be able to pretty much fill that all the way to the brim, I reckon. Mummy home? Mommy. We better go get the door then, hadn't we? Mommy. Good girl. Chicken. Chicken. I mean, I don't throw around the word genius very often, but uh, you know, when it calls for it. So that's it guys, a billy full of apple cider vinegar mixed with molasses. Oh, and don't forget the tin of diced tomatoes. And we'll leave that for 24 hours and wash it out and see how it looks. G'day guys, been about 24 hours. Time flies when you're having fun. I've ended up putting some cling wrap over the top just to keep the oxygen out and to try and put pressure on the tin to bring the level of the liquid up around the sides. So it's looking good. Looking forward to see it, how it turned out. Hey Archie. This is my cat Archie. Wouldn't be out there with Dan's show unless you're getting your hands dirty like this. Anyone for a tin of tomatoes? So. Before I hit it with hot water, I'm actually gonna get the sponge and the scour in there. I've also got a toothbrush to work around that the, the join in the bottom where I, last time it didn't seem to lift all the rust out. So we'll see if we can just work our way around whilst the mix is still in there, doing its thing. see it that well from here but that's looking absolutely awesome let's go have a look outside Cheers. You might recognize Willow from the blue coolers and ice boxes they're known for now. They're widespread in supermarkets in Australia. You probably don't know though, is that they're an Australian owned family business and they've been in business since 1887 making tin cans. They diversified a bit in the war making ammunition and essential packaging for the war effort. And these billies were made between about 1920 and 1950 and after that, the business took a steer towards plastics. They diversified a lot in the last 50 years or so as well with the invention of heat beads. So Willow invented heat beads and also at one point they had the largest headcount of deer in Australia. So that's a pretty diverse portfolio of uh, 
interest, if you ask me. My favourite bit of trivia, though, is that at several points in history, there's been three Ralph Wilsons all working in the family business at the same time, including the CEO. That would get confusing. Here's a few other bits of Willow stuff. This is a biscuit tin that was owned by my grandparents. And I came across this the other week because I, I guess I was, had my eyes out. Mum's measuring cup, which she uses to this day. So thanks mum for letting me borrow it for the video. She says this is an extra good one because it's got the conversion of weight approximation to the volume. So that's really cool. I'm pretty stoked with how this has turned out. You know, I've managed to protect the beautiful patina, that dark gray color on the inside and outside, but just take off that red rust. It's safe to drink out of, and I'm gonna really try to look after this and see if I can get another, like I say, 50 years out of it. We'll see. I'd be keen to know if any of my viewers have got any willow wares laying around. So let me know in the comments if you've got something like this in your garage or kitchen. I made a video recently about seasoning cast iron, and I think if you're interested in this video, you may be interested in that video. Something I'm really proud of, a, a bit of work that I did, and, and I'm really proud of that video, but it hasn't got as many views as I'd like. So if you enjoyed this, I invite you to check out that video as well. In the next video in this series, I'll be talking about all the bits and pieces that's gonna go in the camp kitchen. So I'm gonna lay it all out, go through everything and talk about what's going in and what's not. So that should be fun and I hope you can join us. Like the video if you enjoy it and I'll see you very soon. Thanks very much, bye.